Shana Tova. We begin our service this evening with the singing of Esai Nai on page eight. We begin with a blessing not found in your prayer book. Eloheinu velohe avoteinu vimoteinu, our God and God of all ages, we have come together to pray as one congregation. Yet each of us is strangely solitary in your presence. Each of us comes before you with special hopes and dreams. Each of us has personal worries and concerns. Each of us feels a joy no one else can share. Each of us has regrets which others cannot know. And so we pray, if we are weary, give us strength. If we are discouraged, give us hope. If we have forgotten how to pray, remind us. If we have been careless of time, forgive us. If our hearts have been chilled by indifference, warm them with your mercy, and inspire us with the glowing spirit of your holy new year. We continue on page nine with the singing of The Time Is Now. The time is now, we've gathered And bring all your burdens with you. No need to hide. Arms open wide. We gather as one to make a Macomb Kadosh. We come to It will leave. 
The prayer we are about to utter is not a prayer for you, the congregation, but rather us, your clergy. This is the prayer leader's confessional. We are the first ones to say the phrase, we have done wrong, please forgive us, and do not hold our actions against others. Each one of us comes into this holy space with hopes held high in the promise of tomorrow. And while we offer words of thanksgiving, may each of us also make the space within our hearts to find humility in order to acknowledge how our actions have affected others. And may we also make the space to discover gentle love and patience for ourselves so we can be encouraged to do teshuvah. And now we, your clergy, begin this process with the words of Hinani on page 17. Hineni he'ani mimaas Nir ash v'nevchad mi pachad Yoshev Tehilot Yisrael Ba'ti l'amur Israel, 
We continue on page 19 as we bless the new year. Eloheinu v'elohe avoteinu v'yemoteinu yihi ratzon shenizke levichotecha v'shanat chamishat alafim u'sheva me'ot u'shmonim. Our God and God of our ancestors, may we know your blessings in the year 5,780. Eternal One, bless us in the whole house of Israel with renewed life, happiness, and peace comfort and courage, resilience and strength. May the words of our hearts be acceptable to you in the new year that stretches before us. We are forever grateful for the gift of life. Tekiah. Amen. Please be seated. It is my honor to call up one of our past presidents, Sidney Brandwine, who will light our Yuntiv candles on page 11. Please join me on page 78 for Kiddush. Lift this cup for the year that is gone, for mountaintop moments and the taste of joy. Celebrations shared, milestones met, all we've mastered and achieved since last we met. For wedding rings, tears, and kisses under the chuppah, new babies, first words, and first steps for the children who bless our homes and bring life to our community, for B'nai Mitzvah and Confirmands, young teachers of this holy congregation, ours to cherish and guide with love, together, for beloved wives and husbands, sisters and brothers, for loyal friends who grow more precious with each passing year, for this community which nourishes us all, for all we've learned, for all we've struggled through, for challenges surmounted and disappointments met with courage, for last moments shared with those we loved and lost, for parents and grandparents whose memories are with us forever. 
We lift this cup for the year that is gone, for the year that begins. May we meet it in strength, in unity, in hope. We lift life's cup and celebrate survival. So may we sanctify each day that is ours. We continue now on page 20 as we rise for the Bar Chu. Page 22. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher bivaro ma'ariv aravim v'chokma poteach she'arim uvit vuna mishane itim umachalif et hazmanim umesader et hakokhavim b'mishmiroteam barakia kirtsono bore yom v'layla golel or mipne choshech v'choshech mipne or Mavir yom me vi laila, umavdil ben yom o vein laila, Adonai tsvaot shemo, el chai vikayam, tamid imloch alenu le olam va ed. Aruchata Adonai, amari varavim. Amen. The middle of page 24. Together, 
Love beyond all space and time. Your love enfolds your people Israel. We receive it with your teaching. Your gift of Torah, sacred obligations, discipline, and law. And so let us speak these teachings when we lie down and rise up and find joy forever in your Torah in mitzvot. They are the very essence of our life, ours to ponder and study all our days. May we never lose or be unworthy of your love, for you are blessed, the one who loves your people, Yisrael. Page 32.: We continue responsively on page 33. To break the bonds of anger, to be generous of heart, to break the bonds of shame, to live with self-respect, to break the bonds of envy, to serve one another in joy. To break, to break the bonds, bonds of boredom, boredom, to be attentive to all God's gifts. To break the bonds of fear, to live with courage and strength. To untie the knots of betrayal, to love with fullness of being. To break the bonds of loneliness, to receive a hand of hope. To break the bonds of self-centeredness, to extend a hand of help. Released from the darkness, our people found their freedom at the sea and we pray for liberation at the dawning of this year.
Blessed one, you spread over us a canopy of peace, a shelter of shalom over all Israel, your people, and over Jerusalem. We continue together on page 41. You can't rush a prayer to God. If it comes from the heart, it will rush out on its own, speed through receding galaxies or silences in the soul, and God will hear. Honesty with all, but speaking to God is different. Mind the soul for your coal and gems and regular earth. No pretense, and God will hear. Don't force the prayer or string words together. Pause, perhaps, better not to pray. Silence will be a message of awe, and God will hear. Now step off into the very deep, beyond the way of prayer. We glimpse unknown magnitudes of God, no more, or we would be stunned into silence. Except that love makes itself small, we could not pray at all. Yeah, 
We rise for the Amidah on page 42.
ושהם הקדוש, גדושים בכל יום, יחללו הסלע. Please be seated. וכן תן פחדך אדוני אלוהינו על כל מעשיך ואימתך על כל מה שבראת. And so, in your holiness, give all creation the gift of awe. Turn our fear to reverence. Let us be witnesses of wonder, perceiving all nature as a prayer come alive. We bow to the sovereignty of your strength, the primacy of your power. We yearn for connection with all that lives, doing your will with wholeness of heart. Awe-inspiring is your creation, all-encompassing your transcendent name. Together on page 50. Uvachen ten kavod Adonai la Amecha, Tehila le Recha, Vitigva tova le Dor Shecha, Uvichon pe la Machalim lach. And so, in your holiness, give your people the gift of honor. Bless with praise those who praise you, bless with hope those who seek you. Give your believers a basis for faith, true happiness for the land of Israel, true joy in Jerusalem. May the sparks of David, your servant, soon grow bright enough for us to see a beam of light in the darkness, a promise of perfection. Uvchen sadikim yeru v'yismachu, v'sharim ya'alozu v'chasidim v'rinaya gilu. And so, in your holiness, give the righteous the gift of a vision bright with joy, a world where evil has no voice and the rule of malevolence fades like wisps of smoke. Good people everywhere will celebrate the stunning sight of arrogance gone from the earth. You and you alone, Adonai, will reign over creation upon Mount Zion, home of your presence, and in Jerusalem, a city set apart by you. As the psalmist believed, Adonai will reign eternally, your God, Zion, for all generations. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Adonai, holy sovereign. Baruch atarnai ha-melech ha-kadosh. Amen. Ata b'chartanu mikol ha-amim, ahavta otanu v'ratzita vanu. You chose us with love to be messengers of mitzvot, and through us you made known your aspirations. Together, among all the many peoples, you gave us a pathway to holiness. Among all the great nations, you uplifted us and made yourself our sovereign. And so we seek you and serve you and celebrate our nearness to your presence. Your great and sacred name has become our calling. Middle of page 54. Eloheinu velohe avotenu veimotenu Ya'ale ve'yavo ve'yagia ve'yera'e ve'yera'tze ve'yishama ve'yipaked ve'yizacher zichronenu u'fikdonenu Together on the bottom. Our God and God of the generations before us, may a memory of us ascend and come before you. May it be heard and seen by you, winning your favor and reaching your awareness. Together with the memory of our ancestors, the memory of your sacred city, Jerusalem, and the memory of your people, the family of Israel. May we be remembered for safety, well-being, and favor, for love and compassion, for life and for peace on this day of remembrance. Zochrenu Adonai Eloheinu Boletova, Eternal our God, remember us. Ufokdenu vo livracha, be mindful of us. Vehoshienu vo lechayim, and redeem us for a life of goodness and blessing. Page 
page 58. Eloheinu velohe avotenu veimotenu kodshenu bemitzvotecha veten chelkenu betorah techa. Our praise to you, eternal one, whose power pervades all the earth. You bring holiness to the people Israel and to this day of remembrance. Together on page 60. Ritse Adonai Eloheinu ve'amcha Yisrael u'tefilatam ba'ahava tekabel v'ratzon u'ti l'ratzon tamid avodat Yisrael amecha. Eternal our God, your people Israel yearns for your favor. Receive their prayer with loving acceptance and may you always desire your people's worship. Divine One, close to all who call upon you, bring your grace and presence near to those who serve you. Pour forth your spirit on us, and may our eyes see your merciful return to Zion. Blessed are you whose divine presence is felt again in Zion. <laughs> You are our God, rock of our life. You are our God, shield of salvation forever and ever. We sing your praises, we sing your praises. Compassionate one, merciful Lord, forever and ever.
page 67. We read responsively. Great is peace, for all blessings flow from peace. Great is peace, for without peace, no blessing is complete. Great is peace, for even in times of war, the hope for peace is undiminished. Great is peace, for peace is granted to those who repent. Great is peace, for peace is the inheritance of the righteous. Great is peace, for peace is granted to those who love and study the Torah. Great is peace, for peace is granted to the humble. Great is peace, for peace is granted to those who do justice. Great is peace, for God's name is peace. Great is peace, for peace is equal in weight to all the works of creation. Great is peace, for even heaven needs peace. Behold, if peace is needed in heaven, where neither hatred nor strife is found, how great the need for peace on earth, where hatred and strife abound. We take a few moments for silent prayer.
we continue on page 72 as we turn now to our loved ones whose lives have become precarious because of ill health or hospitalization. May the Eternal One who blesses all life bless and strengthen all of us who struggle against illness. May we whose lives are touched by illness be blessed with faith, courage, love, and caring. May we experience the support and sustenance of family, friends, companions, and community. May we be granted restful nights and days of comfort. We pray for Rafua Shlema, precious moments of healing and a sense of wholeness in body and soul. May those who care for the sick with their hands, their voices, and their hearts be blessed with courage and stamina. May those who pursue healing through medical skills and knowledge be blessed with insight, patience, and compassion. May all of us, the sick and the well together, find courage and hope, and let us say, Amen.
If you are able, please rise for Avina Malkenu on page 74. Avina Malkenu, strong was the faith of generations before us, in exile they proclaimed enduring hope, in the shadow of persecution they affirmed a transcendent love and compassion. Ours is a different age less confident and certain, more tentative in its trust. There are many who say the works of their hands, you are our gods, but when our worship centers on our own creations, we feel less gratitude, more doubt and despair. This is the paradox of our spiritual lives. We grow smaller in self-exaltation, nobler when we reach for you. On this night of return, let us find the humility to come close to you and open ourselves to your presence. For you are absent only when we fail to make room for you in our hearts, distant only when we turn away from you. Now, as others have done before us, let us overcome doubt and speak these words of affirmation together. We call you a Vino, as a loving parent, forgive our wrongs and failings. Accept us in our human frailty. We call you Malkenu, as sovereign of our souls. Help us rise from our brokenness to build a world of shalom. To this vision, we offer ourselves anew. Avina Malkenu, almighty and merciful, you alone are our sovereign. Avina Malkenu, for your sake, show us mercy. Avina Malkenu, act toward us as befits your name. Avina Malkenu, bring healing and wholeness to the world among us. Avina Malkenu, allay the harshness of the decree against us. Avina Malkenu, inscribe us in the book of redemption and renewal. Avina Malkenu, remember our goodness and call it to mind. Avina Malkenu, act for your sake and save us. Avina Malkenu, almighty and merciful, hear our voice. Avinu Malkenu, we have strayed and sinned before you. Avinu Malkenu, have compassion on us and our families. Avinu Malkenu, halt the onslaught of sickness, violence, and hunger. Avinu Malkenu, halt the reign of those who cause pain and terror. Avinu Malkenu, enter our names in the book of lives while lived. Avinu Malkenu, renew for us a year of goodness. Avinu Malkenu, almighty and merciful. Answer us with grace, for your deeds are wanting. Save us through acts of justice and love.
I must admit, I do love the timing of Avina Malkano versus the sermon. It's like a seventh inning stretch right before the 10 p.m. sermon that wakes you up a little bit. Get the choir going and the organ going and you're good to go for another hour. Don't worry. The Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion, the seminary where Rabbi Glasser and I, as well as Rabbi Miller, were ordained. While a fantastic seminary, it's not always been good with talking about God and spirituality. For example, I was in my second year sitting at a table with my friends in the CL. The CL, by the way, is the floor that in other buildings would have been called the basement. I'm not sure why for us it was called the CL. It probably stood for the conference level, but we all affectionately called it the crypt level. <laughs> Back when I was in seminary, it was dark and gray. It was one level down under the streets of Manhattan, and there was a weird skylight that would enables strips of sunlight to kind of seep through in an odd sort of twilight way. There was also a classroom in the far corner that felt dangerously close to the subway. We were always waiting for a train to jump the tracks and come through the drywall with a lit up letter Q that would give better illumination to our CL. There were tables down there that we used to eat at, and back then it was quite possible to be seated at one of them and not know that your friends were down there as well, even if they were just a couple of tables over. It was probably more inviting than this, but I just remember the space being dark and miserable. I was back not too long ago, however, and it's much better now. They switched over to better light bulbs and decide to put a bit of color on the walls and it, it's, it's much nicer now. Anyway, so there we were one afternoon when suddenly we heard the shoutings of two of our professors. This caught us off guard for two reasons. The first was because we didn't know that our professors were down there with us with an earshot of us. And second, because neither of them were prone to angry outbursts like that although the ambiance of the CL did tend to make people a little edgier. One professor was pleading with the other that we needed to start talking about spirituality and God and urge congregants to live spiritual lives if we were to fight off the downward trend of synagogue affiliation. The other professor started shouting back that spirituality was just a made-up word that, and I quote, it's a made-up word that hippies invented to talk about their feelings. <laughs> he finished by exclaiming that, and I quote, Jewish spirituality is not real. It is a made-up term, and don't ever talk to me about that hoozy foozy mumbo-jumbo, made-up fantasy world of yours again. Well, one of them lost that argument because four years later, the school had added two different electives to our available course load. The first class was called God and Spirituality, and the second was Jewish Meditation and Mindfulness. Both courses were taught by two rabbis from the Institute for Jewish Spirituality. 
they had to outsource the staffing of the class because none of our teachers knew how to speak about or even teach about Jewish spirituality. I had a professor at the seminary. He retired a little while before Rabbi Glasser began her journey to become a rabbi. His name is Lenny Kravitz. He was not the five foot ten African American rock star, but was instead a four foot five light bow legged Nebuchadnezzar Jew. Anyway, Dr. Rabbi Lenny Kravitz maintained that the only appropriate class to be labeled as spiritual is one that is taught while drinking scotch. Towards the end of his career, he unfortunately had a bad habit of switching back and forth between Yiddish and English without really knowing it, and those spiritual classes made it a lot harder to follow him. The Yiddish just started pouring out. We loved him, though. That was about as spiritual as our seminary got. It just wasn't part of our culture. We did a lot of talking about what we think God wants of us, what our liturgy tells us about God, how we understand the theology of God, but we never really, until my very last semester in seminary, talked about how we see God in our lives or what God means to us. So I figured with one year to go before becoming a rabbi, why not take the courses offered by the Institute of Jewish Spirituality? I learned a couple of things that year. The first is that I was not super big on Jewish mindfulness and meditation. I understand that I might be yucking on somebody's yum right now. Praise be used with the kids. But please know I have great respect for those who are into mindfulness and meditation. But back then, I had a tough time with it. It was a semester of deep breathing and yoga and sitting still. It was the same three credits as my rabbinic codes and responsa class where I need to fit 2,000 years of rabbinic literature inside my head so I could regurgitate it out in a four-hour final, which was perhaps the single most difficult challenge I had to do in seminary, more so than writing my thesis on the book of Job, which really wasn't that hard. It was just horribly depressing. So there I was with a few of my colleagues in a dark room in the CL, not too far from where the shouting match occurred, lying there on a yoga mat in some odd position that I think I'm still sore from, with a rabbi telling me to focus on my breathing as I breathed out the sounds of God's ineffable name, which sounds like the sound of breath. <sighs> Again, for me at that moment, I could not feel the profound impact of the class. Just that I thought this, this might actually be Fuzzy Fuzzy Mumbo Jumbo. It wasn't until I was sitting and watching my father die from the glioblastoma that I began to understand what Jewish spirituality was. A trope that our instructor would use was notice the feeling you are having and acknowledge it with a breath. Be still and compassionate with yourself and breathe out. And as you breathe out, let your heart call out to God. During the class, I found it hard not to audibly laugh. I am noticing that I'm feeling silly. Breath in. Dear God, get me out of here. Breath out. <laughs> but sitting there with my father in the hospital, with the nurses and doctors of whom I will never forget and will always cherish, especially our own Dr. Beth Poplin, who held our hands as she helped us make decisions, I found myself focusing on his raspy, aspirated breathing. And I was immediately pulled back into the class in the CL. He wasn't responsive for quite some time. We had the beeps of the machines turned off, and we had the bright lights of the hospital turned down. We attempted to get rid of the sterile feeling of the hospital and make it homier. We were playing for him the music of Glenn Gould, a classical pianist whom he loved to listen to. And I sat there, still and breathing, 
acknowledging all the feelings flooding in, acknowledging the inevitable truth of what was only hours away, and breathing out one simple prayer that my father would be at peace in the loving wings of God's divine presence. At that moment, I had a conversation with God about the ways of the world, my thoughts on cosmic fairness, which I don't believe exist, and on how I could honor my father appropriately. I spoke to God in words of kindness and in words of anger, breathing in and breathing out. I had found a spark of Jewish mindfulness and spirituality within me. I think as Jews, we often have trouble with the world of spirituality. I would imagine that many of us would say that we think of ourselves as being spiritual, but might have a hard time explaining what it means. For the sages, spirituality was undoubtedly not a thing. Being Jewish for them was about being observant. Maybe they found spiritual fulfillment in the study of Torah and prayer or writing their texts, but in all their work, I have trouble finding anything that talks about spiritual fulfillment as part of being a Jew. Sure, they wrote Piotim poems that expressed the longings of their heart, but there were no books written that might be found on a shelf marked spirituality at a Barnes & Noble. They cared deeply about thought and action, study and knowledge, so much so that for many of us as Jews, we'd rather dwell within the realm of the mind than the heart. Back to Lenny Kravitz, again the bow-legged Jew, not the self-proclaimed minister of rock and roll. He taught a course on medieval Jewish philosophy, and there was a lore about him and the class which Dr. Kravitz confirmed himself. The lore was is that when he was marking papers, he would gather them together as a pile, and he would go to the top of the stairs of the fifth floor and would give them a little toss. The ones that plopped straight down as a rock would be marked with an L and then graded. The ones that would float a step or two before coming down would be marked with a G and would have to be redone. What did the Gs and Ls stand for? Well, G was for Litziana. In his words, those Luft-type ones, they would need to be redone. And the Ls, the L's were for Litvak. As he would call them, the cold, heartless scholars. He prided himself on being an uncaring Litvak. Again, his words, not mine. Hence the spiritual class that would only contain scotch. The New York campus of HUCJIR had a way of training us to be Litvaks. And while I studied there, I found myself enthralled with the musings of Franz Rosenzweig. Rosenzweig believed that the Bible was not a philosophical document, but a collection of history, stories, laws, and poems, and wise sayings. He believed in an intellectual maturity of religion, which would include the rejecting of any God images that were mystical in nature. He came to understand Judaism, our place in the world, and God as action-based. These are the things we must do and think in order to be Jews. Doesn't matter how you feel about it or how you relate to it. If you want to be a Jew, this is what you do. Said no surprise then that the theologian he had his great debates were with was Martin Buber, who coined the phrase, I thou. For Buber, all of life and its relationships were either one of two categories. I hyphen it relationships or I hyphen thou relationships. I it relationships are mundane or even profane. It's mostly how we interact with the world. Me and my chair, me and my task, assignment, gig, whatever I have to go through. It's this thing that I have to deal with and it's not very important to me. And sometimes we unfortunately treat people in this fashion I-it relationships cannot enable us to know a person as a person. I-thou relationships are where there is real meaning and relationship between two individuals. This encounter is far different than the I-it. 
It demands participation, not distance, giving of oneself and not objectifying. If the other person is to know you, you cannot hold back a part of yourself from them. What is the difference between I, it, and I, thou? It's the hyphen in between. That's what makes the difference for Buber. It's the kavanah, the, the intent we bring to the relationship that helps transform it from an it to a thou. You see, Buber believed that we were going to have a problem on the horizon. And I think that problem is here. He believed this world is going to have evil enter it when we start having I-thou relationships with things that are it and have I-it relationships with things that should be thous. You see, that's when evil enters the world, when we start treating people like its instead of people with the divine image. It was very disconcerting for me to see how our society was treating the Apple Tech announcements. They treated it as if Tim Cook was just like Moses coming down from Mount Sinai as he walked out onto the stage in California, and that he was holding not in his hands two stone tablets, but two iPhones, and that's what we were praising. All this was happening as we lost sight of hurricanes ravaging the Bahamas. When we treat things as people, or even more important to us than people, we turn away from God and evil comes into our world. But we can always change. We can always change our ways and turn back. Turn back to other people and thus to God. That is teshuva, repentance. If we make an effort, relationships can be restored and we can become one with God. That is atonement. So what is God to me? How do I define God? I really can't say. The best I can do is look to a George Harrison song, My Sweet Lord. If you trim out the repetitions of the song, of which there are one or two, you get the lyrics, My Sweet Lord, I really want to see you, really want to be with you, but it takes so long, my Lord. My sweet Lord, I really want to know you. I really want to go with you. Really want to show you, Lord, hallelujah. There's such emotion in here that he both simultaneously has this great knowing of God, but yearning because God is so far away. I think to the Ten Commandments, the second commandment, do not make a graven image of God, not in a likeness of the earth, below or the heavens above. How do we render or make an image of God that reduces God, who is in all that there is, to just one idea? God isn't just one idea, and to many of us, God can be many things. I believe that God is a force that binds us all together. I believe that this force arises when we truly meet and know someone when we care for others no matter where they come from or what their beliefs may be. I believe that God is the force that brought this universe into existence millions upon millions and billions of years ago. I believe that God is the force in our life that calls us to be holy and to serve others and create holiness in the world around us. And I believe that what we are seeing around us is a supreme lack of divinity as a result of our collectively rejecting the divine image of ourselves and others. And I believe that God will mostly be a mystery to me throughout my life, that I will simultaneously long for God and yet still, still feel close to God. Over the next several sermons, I will wrestle with you on topics like Israel and the soul of our nation. I will share my struggles with you and how I attempt to make these conversations I-thou and not I-it conversations. I will not withhold a part of me as Buber urges, but I will not do it in a way that makes any of you feel like an it and not a thou. And hopefully I will do it in 
a reasonable amount of time. I hope that when you leave here, you will feel as though you know me more and understand why I believe the issues I address are issues that are moral and religious challenges for which God is calling us to action. I believe our whole society requires teshuva, a turning. A turning from hate and violence, a turning away from hostility and anger towards the other, and instead a pursuit of understanding the other. Life is messy. We will never stay above the muck, never. But we will have moments when we can rise above it. We can rise above it when we have I-thou conversations with others and with ourselves. How do we make sure that when we respond to the muck, we do so in the best possible way? By making sure that our responses are rooted in our faith and our heritage, not in political whims and fancies, not in vanity, and not in opposition to the image of God. But it takes great humility and vulnerability for us to do that. May we each have this courage, may we each have the strength and humility, and may we each find each other in God in the process. Amen. Amen. Shana Tova once again. Just a few announcements before we conclude our services tonight. Uh, first, I, I want to begin with some thank yous. This is not in any discernible order because everybody's role here to get to this point is tremendously important, and we couldn't have the services that we have here without everybody on this list. But I want to thank, uh, first and foremost, all of our ushers 
all under the direction of Russ Einbeiner, who somehow is able to make sure everybody's in the right place and in the right seat. Also, a big thank you to our seating committee, uh, Rochelle Newman, Joy Goldstein, Elizabeth King, Andy Pober, and Erica Price, who somehow make all of this work and are able to fit together the congregation like a, a giant game of Tetris, almost. Thank you to our amazing choir, all in the direction of Cantor Ott, with a big thanks to John Sheridan and Ricky and Dana Stein for conducting the choir while Cantor Ott sings down here with us. And uh, a big, big thank you to our organist extraordinaire, Shea Veloso, who is somewhere on that side of the wall over there, I think. Yasher Koach to our shofar blower, Jonah Leibowitz. Looking forward to the days to come. Uh, thank you to all our officers and board members who help make all of this possible and encourage us clergy and professional staff to dream big on what we can do here. Thank you to our custodial staff, Julia Sarida and Jim, who worked tirelessly to make this building sparkle. I know when we're three weeks away from Rosh Hashanah and I need to start working on sermons, when I open the door and can suddenly see my face in the reflection of the stones out uh, down below in the lobby. Thank you to our administrative staff, Jen, Rose, Ann, Uma, Amy, Tara, Florica, and Nancy. We really couldn't have done any of this without you guys, and thank you so much for being tolerant of our last minute changes. And thank you to our professional staff, Rabbi Glasser, Kanner Ott, Matt Vogel, our youth and member engagement uh, director, Ina Shepherd, our GON director, and Heather Kibble, our executive director. It is great to have you as a part of our family and a very extra special thank you to Cantor Anna Ott as you begin your transition from Cantor to Cantor Emerita. I have loved every minute of our singing together over these eight years, and I look forward to all the wonderful singing we have left to do this year. I also bring regards from Rabbi Miller and Joan, who could not be with us this holiday season but have words they wanted me to share. It is hard to believe that a year has gone by so very quickly, and we're now entering 5780. I hope and pray that it'll be a year of good health and happiness, prosperity and peace for all our friends and loved ones at the temple. We think of you often and are so pleased to see the vibrant activity that emanates from 222 Livingston Avenue. You and the temple staff are certainly touching many lives in beautiful ways. As you know, Joan and I are not celebrating with you this year. I had no idea that I would be called back into service by the kind folks at Temple Emmanuel in Westfield. The work that I am doing there is challenging and fulfilling at the same time. So much of what we did together during my years with you have influenced my work. As you gather for the High Holy Days, you do so celebrating all of the contributions that Cantor Anna Ott has brought the temple and beyond. It was my privilege to be Anna's partner for 20 years. I join you in celebrating all that she has done for us, and Joan and I look forward to sharing with you in some of the celebrations throughout the year. So as you and the entire congregation begin to celebrate the new year and Aunt Amos 160th year, please know that Joan and I join in wishing you and all of your loved ones a year filled with good health, happiness, and rich fulfillment in all your endeavors. This Rosh Hashanah, we will be with you in spirit while I am on temporary assignment up the road, and you will be in our thoughts and prayers as we welcome the new year. We look forward to being with you all soon. Some logistics for tomorrow. Our morning service will begin at 11.45. That's a new time. It used to be 11.15, but it was always 11.45. <laughs> The difference is that at 11 o'clock, we're having our family service. So that if you have young kids or grandkids, who I'm assuming are not in the congregation right now, you can bring them for the family service at 11 o'clock and then have them go to babysitting or our religious school programming while you're at services here. That gap will also allow the early morning service to leave and for you to find parking for the 1145 service. 
So make sure you come for the 11.45 service, which, God willing, will start at 11.45. <laughs> that also means that Toshlik will be down at Donaldson Park at 2.30 and not 4.30 because the family service is earlier. My uh, in-laws were with my kids earlier at Donaldson Park and have noticed that there is an extreme high tide right now. So come anyway. We might not be standing on the pier doing Toshley. We might be standing at third base according to the photo, but I'm assuming the bread will sooner or later get to the fish. And then second day Rosh Hashanah services will be right here at 10 a.m. You don't need tickets for the service, so if you have a friend who is looking for a place to go, bring them on in and they can join with us in celebrating the new year. Once again, Shana Tova. We continue our service now with Elenu on page 82. If you are able, please rise. Elenu Shabbat Adon HaKol Latek Ketulam Yotzer Breshit Shalom Hasan Kegoyei Haratzot We continue together on the bottom of page 85. The time may be distant and the outcome uncertain, for how could suffering endemic to the human condition ever come to an end? Cessation of desires, relinquishing attachment, diminished expectations, all these might ease the pain of being alive or decide instead that you'll continue to dream, hope, remain fiercely attached to bring a better day, even if the outcome's uncertain and the time is very distant. To everything there is a season, a time for everything under the sun, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to laugh and a time to cry, a time to dance and a time to mourn, a time to seek and a time to let go. But this is the time we remember. We remember those who gave meaning to our lives. This is the time we remember the bonds that tied us together the love that we shared and the memories that remain with us still. Our thoughts turn to loved ones whom death has taken from us in recent days and those who died at this season in years past. Our hearts open as well to the wider circle of loss in our community and wherever grief touches the human family. Zikronam Livracha, may their memories be a blessing in this new year and always. Amen. We rise as one community for Kadisha Tom Mourner's Kaddish on page 90. Yit gadal vi kadash shmei rabah, bi'amah divrach kerotei, bi'amlich malchotei, 
the Chaye Khon of Yome Khon, of Chaye Deko Beit Israel, Bagalav Isman Kariv Vimru Amen, Yehe Shme Rabba Mivarach Leolam Olome Almaya, Yit Barach Vishtabach Vitpaar Vitromam Vietna Set, Vita Dar Vita Levi Talal Shemed Kudashab Riku, Le Ela Ule Ela Miko Birchata Vishirata, Tush Bechata Venechamata, Damiran Bilma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, the Chaim Alenu Vel Ko Israel, Vimru Amen. O Se Shalom Bimromav, Huya Se Shalom, Alenu Vel Ko Israel, Vel Ko Yoshve Tevel, Vimru Amen. May the source of peace bestow peace on all who mourn, and may we be a source of comfort to all who are bereaved as we say, Amen. Oh, Please remain standing as we conclude together with the singing of Adon Olam on page 94. Our God and God of our ancestors, eternal God of all generations, may your presence in our lives this new year renew our spirits and renew our strength. May it be a good year. May it be a sweet year. May you be inscribed and sealed for a good year. Amen. Amen.